Thank you, Madam Chairman. The amendment before you today holds the Department of Defense to current accepted DOD policy and standards when appointing military chaplains. It maintains the status quo, which has been well accepted for decades, if not centuries. My amendment affirms the spiritual role of chaplains in the U.S. Armed Services, preserving the integrity of the U.S. Chaplain Corps. I would like to thank Representatives Jim Bridenstein and James Lankford for their co-sponsorship of this amendment. This amendment was adopted last year during the House's consideration of DOD appropriations on a bipartisan basis, although it was ultimately dropped from the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2014. I would urge my colleagues to support its passage again today. Chaplains, by definition, are ministers for spiritual needs to people of secular institutions. They are equipped to do so because, like many other professionals, requiring a certain skill set, chaplains possess a belief in God or a spiritual worldview. Chaplains are experienced in their field, educationally qualified, and are willing to serve and attend to the spiritual needs of all members of the armed services, regardless of whether or not that soldier, sailor, sailor, airman, or marine shares the same faith as that of the chaplain. Current DOD uh, guidelines require that the candidates be endorsed by a, quote, qualified religious organization, end quote, whose primary function is to, quote, perform religious ministries to a non-military lay constituency, end quote, and which holds tax-exempt status as a church. Faith and spiritual leadership are integral and inseparable from the institution of the chaplain corps. It would be difficult for an individual lacking in any faith to be appointed as a military chaplain, first dismantling the purpose of the chaplaincy and making significant changes to the DOD policy. Madam Chairman, it is an oxymoron to have a secular person attached to a secular institution as a chaplain, how can that person minister to the spiritual needs of others? Even so, there continues to be a movement to appoint atheist chaplains in the military. Such individuals reject the very existence of God, a deity, or even a spiritual worldview. And thus, an atheist chaplain would not serve any identifiable need for service members that is not already currently being met with the armed forces. Now, there are a host of other non-spiritual services available to support people of in a non-faith context, including social workers, psychologists, and counselors. Through Military One Source and the Military and Family Life Counselor programs, service members can receive temporary and confidential counseling services from a licensed professional without any attachment to their records. In addition to these services, military chaplains can stand ready to faithfully and respectfully serve all service members with any resources they might need, regardless of whether the individual shares the chaplain's faith. My amendment would prevent DOD from making changes to its long-standing appointment process that could undermine the integrity of the chaplaincy and interfere with the chaplain's responsibility to meet the religious needs of our brave men and women in uniform. I would like to thank the Family Research Council and the Chaplain Alliance for their support of this amendment and urge all of my colleagues to join me in supporting this amendment. Okay.